now to take a look at what to expect in the economic week ahead. We are joined by Peter Worthington. He's a senior economist at Barclays Africa. Peter, thanks for your time. We just had Liston Majors here uh, who basically pointed, painted a very bleak uh, outlook for South Africa. But uh, in terms of uh, data that we're expecting out for this week, maybe just tell us what you'll be looking at uh, top of mind for you, inflation numbers ahead of the SOB. Yeah, look, I mean, I think it's going to be very key for the SAR because we do see inflation on a rising trend. And as the previous speaker noted, there are a lot of things which are sort of very weak about the economy right now. So that in theory might give the SARB some pause to, on the interest rate hiking cycle. But on the other hand, inflation is rising. Uh, Inflation expectations appear to be de-anchoring a little bit from that upward bound of 6% in the inflation target. And so I think it's a finely balanced decision. And therefore, what we get on Wednesday on the CPI could tilt it one way or another, possibly. We're very much on consensus. We think we're going to have a headline reading of about 5% and then a core inflation reading unchanged at 57 But the point that I would make about Wednesday is it's not going to be the peak in the headline reading. We are actually looking forward uh, not in a, in, a, in a very happy way, but we do expect a breach of the inflation target to start before the end of the year and last for some period of time. And that is something the SARB will be cognizant of when they come to have their deliberations about where to set interest rates on Thursday. Mm. So, Peter, given everything you've just said now, what are your predictions, uh, given everything you've said, when it comes to the interest rate decision that we can expect from mm. our Reserve Bank Governor? Look, I, I, I don't remember a time when economists have been so evenly divided on whether the SARB is going to hike or not. I mean, the surveys by Bloomberg and also by Reuters show a pretty neat division down the middle. Uh, we are in the camp that says that they will hike, but we acknowledge it's a, it's a finely balanced decision. But as I said, I think there's a couple of things out there which will motivate them to hike, even though uh, the economy is quite weak. And one of them is the fact that inflation expectations are rising or appear to be in the last survey. And that's not something that they will feel very comfortable with. And you can also say about interest rates that with inflation rising, the real level of interest rates is actually falling. And so there can be an argument there for hiking just to keep the real level of interest rates uh, constant. Um, I think another uh, factor which they're going to be quite aware of is that we have food price inflation which is going to return in the second half of the year. May's prices now are up an additional 20% since the end of May and we've not seen that yet really manifest in food prices but it is going to be coming. Um, so I think that those are some of the things they'll look at. And then on the other side, they'll be looking at what is a very weak economy, uh, not least um, weak sales data in the retail sales prints, weak production numbers in mining and manufacturing output that have come out recently, and a very, very negative number for consumer confidence in the second quarter. Mm. Uh, you're talking about mining and manufacturing, and we have been talking about the commodities and uh, uh, the, you know, the dips that we have seen in uh, the, the, dif the different metals and the resources there. Uh, trade numbers, they're not coming out this week, but they are expected out next week. Uh, just give us a sense of the trends that we've seen and if these dips that we are seeing in the commodity prices uh, is likely to change the trade data numbers that are going to be uh, coming through. Yeah, look, I mean, the trade numbers are interesting. They're maybe one of the, the brighter pieces of data news that we've had recently on the economy. And the, the trend is quite fantastic in some ways. We had a terrible number, a record deficit in January. February wasn't very good either. March and April were somewhat better. And then in May, we actually had a surprise surplus. So the data which comes out at the end of the month for the month of June, I'm very curious to see if that improving trend is sustained. Now, obviously, we've had some pressure on our, the prices of our export commodities, chiefly gold and platinum, but also to some extent iron ore and coal. And that in its own would be negative for the balance of payments. But offsetting it to a significant degree has also been the um, decline of oil prices down uh, below $60 a barrel. For every little bit of pressure we get on our commodity export prices, we typically tend to see some downward pressure on oil providing a bit of an offset. And our modeling exercise that we do suggests that the net effect uh, is not particularly large, that it'll probably be on the order of 0.1, 0.2% of GDP net, uh, unless we have a situation where platinum and gold prices fall so sharply that the mines begin to shutter some of the more unprofitable shafts. And I think that that really is the risk for the balance of payments. But I am curious in those trade numbers that are out at the end of the month. Peter, thank you so much. That was Peter Worthington. He's a senior economist at Barclays Africa.